Hi, my name is Josh Manning. Welcome to Red Hat Partner Connect. Today I'll be going over operator development using Helm. Um, this is the fourth installment in the operators webinar series. What do you need to develop a Helm operator? Uh, you'll need the following components just to get started. Uh, we've already gone over setting up our a development environment to work with, um, starting with a rail host machine and as well as a Kubernetes or OpenShift cluster. In our webinar series, we cover uh, setting up MiniShift, uh, which we should already have running in order to get started with this presentation. The operator framework componentry we'll be consuming today is the Helm app operator kit available on GitHub in the operator-framework organization. And that uh, repository name is Helm app operator kit uh, with hyphen spacing. Uh, you'll also need a Helm chart uh, already written for your application provided in a tar archive and it can be downloaded uh, from a remote URL or just uh, copied locally into the uh, code repository. Uh, you'll need the following additional tools as well. Uh, you'll need Git, which has been always uh, been available on Rails 7, and you'll also need Builda and Podman. Those are only available on Rails 7.5 and later out of the Extras repository. And you'll also need a Red Hat Connect account and project set up in order to be able to push your resulting operator container image into the registry for scanning and ultimately publishing. And we'll begin with setting up the Helm operator kit. As with the MiniShift presentation, we have a quick start guide provided uh, for you to follow along. And this is at github.com slash rhc4tp in the operators repository there. And you can go to the docs subdirectory and open the Helm operator quick start guide. And we'll start by obtaining the Helm operator kit from GitHub. Uh, we'll go ahead and clone that repository. And once we've cloned that locally, we'll go ahead and change into the repository's uh, base directory. Start by reviewing the Docker file. Um, there is a Docker file already provided. However, we do need to change a few things. Uh, notably, we need to change from Alpine to a rel-based image, and this is a requirement uh, to be able to publish a third-party ISV a Red Hat partner image to Red Hat Container Catalog. It can also be a scratch image as well, but here we're using a rel base just for simplicity and as it also provides us uh, the tar commands, which uh, rel atomic does not. And for brevity here, we're just using rel. We're also using builda to assemble this in lieu of docker, mainly because uh, docker 17 and later aren't provided in rel, only 1.13. And this particular docker file uses multi-stage building where it goes and creates a, a builder container using the golang base image to build our operator code and once that code is compiled, we copy that artifact out of the container. And here you'll see in this file, uh, you have a copy statement where we copy in that resultant binary. The Helm chart is provided uh, when we build the container as a build argument. Uh, here we have, we're using an environment called Helm underscore chart. And we copy that passed in tarball build argument to, into the container at the root directory uh, chart.tgz. And then we go ahead and extract that and do the uh, chart directory on the root of the container uh, file system. There is a, uh, in this case, uh, we'll be using Tomcat. There's a Tomcat subdirectory, and we strip that uh, subdirectory off. We just want the YAML and various uh, template files contained within, and where those are just, those are just placed in the uh, chart directory off the root of the file system. So we'll go ahead and start by configuring uh, build on Podman. They use uh, et cetera, containers, registries.com. Um, we do have to make some modifications here, namely because uh, we're dealing with some remote re registries that aren't set up by default, and uh, they're ignored by Build and Podman if they aren't specified here. Uh, kind of a, an added, I guess, security feature where we only want it to interact with things that we've allowed it to and not just random uh, from anywhere, unsecure Docker registries. Um, we've added scan.connect.redhat.com which is the uh, Red Hat Connect scanning registry. So that's stage one for publishing an image. We'll pub push our uh, container image, our operator container image there where it will be scanned. And if it passes a scan, you will have the option to go ahead and publish that operator image. And docker.io here, normally I would exclude this maybe in a production environment, uh, but in this case it's included here because the Golang uh, builder base image uh, that we need is required in order to assemble the operator code. And next we'll start with actually building the, an Apache Tomcat operator image as an example using Builda. Here in the Builda command you'll see Builda bud, that's uh, build using Dockerfile. We give it a tag or a, just an image tag or a container image tag name of organization slash image name colon and then a version. 
in this case, we're using Apache, Tomcat dash operator, and a version, an arbitrary version of 0.1.0. Our first build argument, and it wraps to the next line, is the Helm chart command, which we've gone over uh, reviewing the Docker file contents there. This is a, a Helm chart for uh, Apache Tomcat, and it's located at a remote Google storage drive location. Um, our second build argument is the API version. We've gone over this in, in the previous presentation, where this is the API that we are, we're creating to be custom managed by the operator. In this case, we're using uh, a vendor organization name slash version, arbitrary version number, in this case, apache.org v1 alpha one. And finally, a build argument of kind equals Tomcat. This is the kind of resource that we're consuming and that we want the operator to manage. Uh, this is the, the type of uh, Kubernetes resource, essentially. And lastly, the dot slash on the end is required. Um, that sets the build context for Builda to use a Docker file in the current directory, which we should be sitting in the uh, base repository for the Helm app operator kit, which we've cloned down. And then we'll push our uh, resulting operator image to connect here. And we'll start by logging into Red Hat Connect scanning registry using Podman. Um, so you just Podman login, and you'll give it an unused username. Uh, that's literally dash u unused and the uh, remote registry scan.connect.redhat.com and it will prompt you for a password where you would paste in the the registry key provided for you uh, at the Red Hat Connect site under the uh, upload your image tab and then we'll go ahead and push the image we built build up push in this case build on my host prefixed where we had apache.org or apache slash tomcat operator with a local host prefix uh, so you may need to adjust that for your host but we're pushing the locally contained image that we built into Red Hat Connect. And you'll also need your project ID here. You'll need to replace this string with your actual project identifier. And that's kind of a long hashed unique string there. Um, we'll start with Helm app operator deploy crd.yaml, replacing its contents with the following. Um, we set the API version here. This is API extensions. This is common for CRDs, where we actually name that uh, tomcats.apache.org uh, group or vendor name apache.org and the kind here that should match uh, what we specified when we built the container and various types here, like uh, what the named list item would be or list object and the plural and singular uh, names, excuse me, for interacting with OC or cube control. And we claim the version of the API v1 alpha one here. Continuing with the operator deployment. So this is the Kubernetes manifest where we actually deploy the operator image into OpenShift or uh, Kubernetes Minishift. Um, that is in the Helm op app operator subdirectory from the root of the repository and the deploy folder operator.yaml. Uh, you'll need to substitute uh, certainly the project ID there uh, under the image in the spec field uh, containers you'll need to replace image name scan.connect.redhat.com slash your project identifier and then the name in this case tomcat dash operator and then ultimately a version uh, the version number tag so uh, you'll need colon uh, 0 0.1.0 as well and you'll also see where tomcat dash operator in the default um, file we have a just HTML tag chart is what's used throughout. Editing the cluster role binding here. We'll start by updating the rbac.yaml file contents. And the only thing that changes is this, in this file is the API group here. In the first declaration, you'll see a few of kind of the same listings, but we change API groups from HTML tag vendor as a placeholder to, in this case, apache.org. And preparing the operator namespace, we go in and log into Minishift and create a new namespace for the operator. OC login dash u system colon admin. That's a, the equivalent of the, the root user in Linux or Unix. And cr we create a new project called Tomcat operator. Next, we create an RHC scan registry, a, a pull secret or image pull secret for interacting with the Red Hat Connect scanning registry. And this this pulls in the auth.json file, so when we logged into Podman earlier, it created a, an authentication JSON file for us with our, with our cache credentials, and it puts that in a temporary runtime directory 
uh, with a subdirectory of container slash auth dot json. And then we also have to give it the type of file, in this case, kubernetes.io slash docker config json. And finally, once the secret is built and we've named it RHCC, we'll link it to the default service account for image pulling. And then we'll go ahead and launch all of our custom resource definitions and remaining Kubernetes resources. That's occrate-f and we get the crd.yaml, the rback.yaml, and the operator.yaml. And with all those in place, we can go ahead and start editing our custom resource here. Uh, substituting for uh, any tagged items. In this case, it's already pre-populated with Tomcat, or should be in the quick start guide, so you can just go ahead and copy and paste that into your terminal editor there. Kind Tomcat uh, API version, apache.org slash v1alpha1. The instance name in this case of this particular resource, we want it named my-tomcat, and we give it a label with an app, and a key value app, and a an Tomcat. And in the spec, this is essentially what we're defining, what we the operator to do or how to scale out. Uh, we give it a replica count of two, just as a simple example here. And then once we've edited and created that custom resource, we trigger the operator. Uh, we can run OC create on this .yaml manifest file here, and then we can watch the operator uh, start to deploy two instances of those pods. And that effectively wraps it up for today. Uh, additional resources, uh, there's some more helpful content on working with Helm charts, operators, and build in particular. We'll start uh, with some a couple blog posts from Rob Zumsky, uh, from the, uh, previously of the CoreOS team, still with Red Hat, um, over at blog.openshift.com, and that's from templates to OpenShift Helm charts. Also, he has a blog, an interesting blog on building a Helm op app operator in 15 minutes. And then Chris Collins also has an interesting blog article on getting started with Builder, just to give you some familiarity with using the tool. I'd like to thank you for attending today. Uh, looking forward to uh, moving on in the Operator Web Series. Our next installment will be covering the Operator SDK and Operator uh, internals, kind of like the, the bits and pieces of it, how the SDK project layout is laid out, how Helm charts are written and, th and things of that nature. Uh, but if you would, uh, please attend. And uh, looking forward to seeing you in future installments. Thanks again for attending. Have a great day.